So I thought I'd make a video of my uh, Browning. Um, it's a B26 Liege, uh, 1973 manufacture date on this. So these things were made uh, in in uh, Belgium, um, and they sort of uh, they were in between basically the uh, the Superpose and then uh, the Satori line. Um, so if we look in here um, closely, anyways, uh, you know a lot of guys. Um, I guess when these things first came out, they weren't, uh, you know, they weren't highly prized. Um, they had, uh, let's see if we can get that thing to focus on there. Yeah, you can see it there. Browning, Liege. Um, you know, they just weren't as ornate as uh, a lot of the Superpose. Um, Superpose were just... You know, quite expensive compared to everything else. So this was Browning's attempt to basically make try and make a uh, a good shotgun, but um, at uh, at a cheaper cost, anyways. So, um, you know, if you haven't seen one before, anyways, here's the. Uh, I'll show you the markings on there. Try and get a, a good angle. So, Browning Arms. Let's see if we can do this better here somehow. Browning Arms, Utah, Montreal, and. Get that sucker to focus there. Made in Belgium. You can see all the uh, the proofs um, on the side there as well. So uh, you know it does have uh, the extractor pins. Um, you know it's a it's a pretty good simple design. Um, you know on, on both sides. You can see that. So I was just. Uh, uh, checking the firing pin, so I had to get a new uh, a firing pin on the uh, on the bottom here. And um, you know these are handmade guns, right? So um, everything sort of needs to be fit and finished. So the the firing pin that I got um, is a is a tad bit long, so I'm gonna have to uh, take it out and and uh, prop it on the lathe there and and um, shorten it up a tad. So um, anyways, yeah, I've got to, so I'll I'll have to pull the stock off. Um, and I'll show you the uh, the inner workings on this. Um, one of the things that's uh, I think to me, anyways, is uh, you know sort of uh, highly sought after now is it uh, it has a mechanical trigger, so it doesn't have the inertia block in there. Um, so you can you know if there's a misfire on the bottom, you can still pull on the top trigger. Um, you know I don't know if it's sort of the precursor for the modern day. Um, you know the the seven twenty fives that are out right now. Um, it's fairly similar in terms of what I've seen but uh, we'll, we'll get it apart here and uh, show you um, anyway so this is different sort of between the super poses you know um, they had uh, they got a uh, different style in here this was a, a rotary one um, and then the Satori's had the uh, button at the uh, the front of the the, the fore in there so so one of the other things anyways here um, just so you know you know if you're dealing with the 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 B27, um, or sorry, the B26, the Browning. Belgium, um, it's a 7.3J. Uh, J is a 12 gauge, but 7.3 and 7.4, um, 1973 and 1974, those were the years that they were made in, in uh, Belgium there. Okay, so here's the uh, the inner workings here. Um, you can see both the hammers are, are out right now because I was uh, measuring the, uh, the firing pin. Um, but you can see it doesn't have uh, sort of your, you know, um, typical uh, inertia block. It's just this little uh, selector here. So this is it's sort of got this um, uh, over under selector here, and then um, the two uh, the two different um, uh, sort of I guess catches there on the hammer here. So what I'll do is I'll um, I'll pull back the hammers, and then uh, you can see how it moves from one to the other. So there's sort of um, two. You know, independent. Um, I don't know if that's the the sear, sear it's called or whatever it is. Anyways, there on the catches on the hammer. So there's two of those in there, and then sort of the um, this uh, selector in here. Anyways, it starts off on one side, and then once one is released, it, it flips over on the other one, and uh, th that's how sort of the the trigger mechanism works there. Um, so we can see the. Uh, a uh, lower and upper hammer in there, um, or firing pin, I mean, and uh, so I gotta pull up the, the lower and uh, throw it on the lathe there and turn it down just uh, about, um, what are we looking at here? I think about uh, a tenth thou. Okay, so I got um, got the firing pin, but, 
pinned back in. Um, took it down, uh, let's see, 1,000 uh, thousandths, so I guess into the thousandths there. Um, wasn't much, but uh, just enough, so it was sort of within the min and max range. Um, you know, I said it was a lathe. Well, you know, it wasn't a lathe. It was, you know, the drill, the file, and uh, and the stone. Anyways, it works. Um, so I thought I'd just show you quickly anyways how this um, uh, selector pin works here. So uh, it sort of does the over, uh, the over, the under. That's tough to do without looking at here. Sideways. So it just changes which little... Um, I guess sear it it uh, it catches on here so when it switches from one it just lifts up the other um, and then just sort of this little plate here um, yeah flops uh, one way or the other way after one's fired the other one's fired so I thought I would just uh, clean the the top firing pin as well it's good to get in there every once in a while um, so it's just this little you know this little uh, pin right in here so we're just gonna tap it out you know, we get to a certain point there and then just kind of tap it on through um, the bottom has a spring behind it on the firing pin um, I believe on this one the top does as well I just can't quite remember but uh, we'll see in a second here I think we adjust about got it almost out yeah there's a, there's a spring in there so you just gotta watch you know you don't want to fire the dang thing right through um, okay so there's the pins out um, you can see the firing pin coming out now I'll just flip it over and then we can we'll take the firing pin out it's um it's pretty clean you know I, I did it about this time last year not um, running a ton on the uh, on the top barrel for the, the full choke, I'm still at the uh, the front of the trap house there, so. Anyways, uh, yeah, so there you go. Well, oh yeah, there's still, there's a bit on the firing pin there. So we'll, uh, I'll clean that up. Um, just uh, grab the, see the spring? We'll just grab the spring out. There's the spring, and uh, give it a quick clean. And then, uh, yeah, a little bit anyways. And then a little light bit of oil, and, and we'll put her back together. So I thought I'd show you just, you know, after, uh, what is it, 43-odd uh, years, how, how tight this browning still is. It's absolutely amazing. Um, you know, it's it's been used over the years for sure. There's no two ways about it. But, um, you know, I, I think, it, you know, you got to use oil, right? And, uh, you know, you can see there's a tad bit of, you know, uh, there was some surface rust starting to show up there, but and there's some little bit of score marks here. However, having said that, I mean, this thing is just, you know, it's amazing. There's just, there's no slop, no nothing in there. It is tight. It, it's just, just a dream to shoot this gun. Love it. Love it. Anyway, so that's, uh, you know, that's the show for the, um, you know, the Browning, the uh, Belgium-made um, B26 Browning. Um, just show you on this side. Patent pending kind of a thing. Um, yeah, anyways, there it is.